The Gators kick off the season Thursday night at 14th ranked Utah. Then the SEC season officially begins when the Vols come to town mid-September for a week three rematch. Here to give us a preview of Florida's upcoming season is Jacob Rudner of Swamp 24-7. A lot to talk about and exciting year two um while the offense and what it'll look like under graham mertz is really grabbing most of the attention i hate to start on a negative note but the latest headline is on the defensive side of the ball you got the edge rusher justice boone lost for the season due to a torn acl so how do the gators make up for losing him yeah that's a tough injury for florida because that was somebody who was expected to occupy a starting role along florida's defensive front tears his acl and now has to miss the season. And it's gonna force Florida to get a little bit creative. Uh, Tyreek Sapp, who was defensive tackle for Florida last year, will now have to slide outside uh, and play a little bit of that edge position. Uh, this is a guy who is quick. He's got good power for his speed, uh, a little bit undersized for the defensive tackle position. So a lot of people thought uh, that when he came out of South Florida, uh, that he would be somebody who would actually play on the edge. So maybe kind of a return uh, to where he was initially projected to, to slot in on Florida's defense, uh, but somebody who should be able to fill that, that gap uh, pretty sufficiently. He will not be the only player who has to play the position, though. Uh, I would expect true freshmen, Kelby Collins and Cameron James, to see a little bit of time there. Uh, Jack Pyburn, a sophomore who was on special teams a lot last year. Uh, and then Caleb Banks, uh, a defensive tackle transfer from Louisville. It sounds like Florida is kind of preparing for him to see a little bit of a versatile role where he might be able to play on the outside. Uh, help on heavier, you know, rushing down situations uh, this season. And so uh, it'll be a little bit creative, but I would imagine Tyreek Sapp uh, will be the predominant player for Florida at that F edge spot. Hopefully never next man up, it's next men up, because that is a uh, big hole to fill. Let's talk positive. Florida is bringing in a top 15 recruiting class. So my question to you is, who are some freshmen expected to contribute this season? On the offensive end, it's, it's mostly wide receivers. I think those are the guys who have stood out quite a bit throughout fall camp. Uh, Andy Jean, Aiden Mizell, Eugene Wilson, uh, all guys who were four, maybe even near five-star prospects uh, in that 2023 class for the Gators. Uh, three guys who are all very quick, and I think that's the reason that we should be able to see them so much this season, uh, particularly somebody like Eugene Wilson, who should have some opportunities for Florida as a special teams player, but really kind of as a gadget guy on offense. Uh, routes out of the backfield, screen passes, things that are going to allow him to utilize his speed after he has the ball in his hands. Uh, and then guys like Andy Jean, who are more of a you know route technician, uh, very careful wide receiver who's kind of wise behind, beyond his years uh, and should be able to contribute for that reason. And defensively, there are several other players. I mentioned a couple of them uh, when we talked about Justice Boone, Kelby Collins, Cameron James, both of whom were top edge defensive line uh, prospects in the 2023 class. I would expect them to be out there. Safety, Jordan Castell is somebody who I think should see quite a bit of playing time, if not even start for Florida at some point this season. Uh, Bryce Thornton, who is also in that safety room, is somebody who could see the field a little bit. And of course, Jakeem Jackson, who was one of Florida's top ranked prospects uh, in that 2023 class. He should see considerable time at, at corner. I don't know that he starts for the Gators right away, but certainly somebody uh, who could push the starters for playing time early and maybe obtain uh, a starting role as the season goes on. There are a few coaches as hot as Billy Napier is on the trail right now. Uh, top 15 class last year is one thing. They're number three in the nation in the 2024 class. What can we expect, though, on the horizon in 25? Yeah, Florida's really still in that put out feelers, build connections phase with 2025, and it's it's early. That's the biggest thing that I would say. It's, it's hard to tell uh, exactly where everybody is at in that class. Uh, but there are a handful of prospects who are starting to stand out due to their Florida connections. And on the offensive end, that certainly starts with quarterback Ryan Montgomery, uh, a well-regarded prospect in the 2025 class, somebody Florida has been involved with for quite some time. Uh, good arm, good feel for the game, uh, and is really well-connected to this staff. Florida enjoys uh, Ryan Montgomery's company. They've had him out in Gainesville now, uh, I believe, multiple times. And, and the biggest thing with this guy uh, is Florida is as tied in with him as any other player at the position. Uh, not really a deep class at the moment for Florida in 2025, but Montgomery is certainly somebody who they are well connected to uh, and, and have a good footing in their recruitment. Uh, on the defensive side, I would say is one of my most you know favorite prospects in the 2025 class, and that's Edge Amari Williams, uh, a guy who is just on the edge right now. 
of five-star status. He's in five-star range at number 31 overall on the 24-7 sports rankings. Uh, a very fast, athletic guy who understands how to get to the quarterback and plays a position of need for the Gators. Florida needs depth at edge. Uh, it is a thin position for it right now, especially with that Justice Boone injury. And that'll continue over the course of the next couple of years. Uh, and so a guy like Amari Williams is, is somebody who they really want to try to get into the fold. A uh, very talented kid. Uh, and, and, and somebody who is well-connected to Florida staff as well. His head coach uh, is a former Gator quarterback. So, you know, Florida will obviously try and leverage those ties with him. Uh, his father played in the NFL with the Minnesota Vikings. So he has, you know, NFL bloodlines and is a very talented prospect. Uh, this is somebody who I think has a lot of really good options right now. Florida is among them. Uh, and if they can bring him into the class, it really could seal, a, you know, a great crop for the Gators. Okay, we talked present, we talked near future and distant future. I think we've covered it all. Jacob, thank you so much for being here. Safe travels to Salt Lake. Another reminder to check out Gators 24-7 for all things Florida football and recruiting, not just this class, next class and the next class, because that's exactly what the recruiting coordinators are doing at the Swamp right now. So check out swamp247.com.